hello guys um so what i'm going to do what i'm going to have to actually do is record now it's like a little bit before 11 and i'm usually sleep at this time um, or before this time and actually i was asleep some hours back but then once my son was finished playing with toys and it was his bedtime i kind of like woke up out of the bed and took a shower and stuff and coming on to do bible study because tomorrow with school um they're they're pushing everything up like an hour early so the time that i would usually be recording in the mornings around that time we're going to be on his school thing and i'm not sure what time i'll be able to come on later after that so the lord was just telling me come on and record now and um yeah i'm just going to quickly show you guys um, just this little board that I worked on for him. I, I worked on another one for him. A new one. And then you guys know I had did that one and stuff too. So I just wanted to show you guys that. And um, also what I want to pray. I have been praying for you guys also. I pray for you guys tonight. Um, but I, I just really want to um, pray over each and every one of you guys. Blessings, peace, and favor. I speak blessings, peace, and favor over you and your families, you know, and I just, I believe that God is going to do something and some great things in your life that are going to cause you to smile, that's going to cause you to like know that without a shadow of a doubt, God is with you, he hears you, and he's with you, and you'll, you'll know it was God, you know, so God is faithful in Jesus' name, that's my uh, decree over you all. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So, guys, we're going to jump back into um, John. We're still in John. Um, we're going to be in John for the next couple of days. It is the end of the day for Monday. Uh, today was kind of a long day, but it was a great day. God is good, and I thank him. I thank him. Um, so, this video is intended for Tuesday. So, between um, Tuesday and Wednesday, we're going to conclude John. And um, let me actually just go there, guys. I feel like I'm, I think it's this way. Yeah, it is. It is. So if you missed um, our other video before this for John, uh, for First John, feel free to read it. We went over introduction, outline the contents. We read all of one, all of two, and we read three, uh, um, three verses one through ten. So we're going to continue three and we're going to continue to read. And I don't want to turn on um, his little light because <clears throat> I want him to like stay sleeping. The TV light is on. So I'm just recording with the phone light. So that's fine. So we let's talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. Let's talk about love one another. Okay. So, and I said, God bless our Bible study in Jesus name. Amen. So this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. This is going back to Genesis. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer and you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This, then, is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do, do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Those who obey his commands live in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. Amen. So if you want, you can take your notes on it. Um, you can leave below what you got out of it. If you don't want to, that's fine. Um, just, you know, meditate and reflect on uh, what you got out of um, 
1 John 3, the remainder of it. So now let's talk about chapter 4, test the spirits. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys, and God's love in ours. Okay, so let's talk about test the spirits first. So, dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which, you know, we've talked about before and we talked about um, on the recent one we just did, the Antichrist, right? What you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them. We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit, and you see what it's saying in the footnotes, of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Okay, so now let's talk about God's love and ours. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. So, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love God does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son or his only begotten son in the footnotes into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love of on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world, we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment or torment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. That's 1 John four eighteen. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. So now let's talk about, I think chapter 5 for First John is the last one. Then I think we can be able to get into Second John and Third John if we have time. Yeah, because see, that's going to Jew. I think we will have time to read all of this, um, but whatever we don't get a chance to finish, we'll just pick up on Wednesday, Lord's will. And I already talked with you guys about the theme for the month of July, which is going to be faith. So for July, um, I'm going to be uploading as God leads, and um, we're going to be doing a lot of faith-filled videos, uh, a lot of decrees and prayers on faith. And also, we're going to be doing a lot of um, stories from the Bible and scriptures of faith and where people had to exercise faith or allow their faith to speak for them and so on and so forth. So uh, that's going to be our theme. So if we if we finish this tonight, then on Wednesday, God's will, we're just going to move into the faith videos. But I know he told me to finish all this first. OK, so let's talk about um, faith in the son of God. So everyone who believes that Jesus did I read this? Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Hold on. And he has given us his command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. I believe I read that. Okay. So faith in the son of God. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God by loving God and carrying out his commands. This is love for God. 
to obey his commands and his commands are not burdensome for everyone born of God overcomes the world <clears throat> excuse me guys just air conditioner so this is the victory that has overcome the world even our faith who is it that overcomes the world only he who believes that Jesus is the son of God so that's you you know you overcome the world amen so um this is the one who came by water and blood jesus christ he did not come by water only but by water and blood and it is the spirit who testifies because the spirit is the truth for there are three that testify the spirit and then you can i'm just going to show you real quick the footnotes what it's saying okay so wait Okay, for there are three that testify the spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. Somebody say that. And the three are in agreement. Okay, so we accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God. That is so powerful, guys. This whole thing is powerful. But listen, we accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is a testimony of God, which he has given about his son. Anyone who believes in the son of God has this testimony in his heart. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because and we know God is not a liar and cannot lie. So this just goes to show you the evidence of what he's saying, right? So God has made him out to be a liar. Anyone who does not believe God, not believe God has made him out to be a liar because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. And you know, with all these religions and all these uh, different things, they feel like all roads go, anything goes, you know, always go this way, go that way, go, you know, but it's only through Jesus Christ. So if it's not coming through Jesus Christ, then that other ways is wrong. So concluding remarks. So I write these things to you and now I'm going to just share this really quick. Even I just feel led to share this. The Holy Spirit has put this on my heart to share you know, when I was in the world, I felt like because I was a good person, which the Bible says no one is good, only God. Even um, um, there is a story with Jesus where somebody said something to him like, good teacher, good master, something. And then he was like, it's not before me, guys. But Jesus, even Jesus Christ himself said, you know, why do you call me good? What did he tell them, Lord? Like he said something like, why do you call me good? Only one is good. And he was saying, God, and you know, I was like, wow, Jesus Christ from God was so humble. He wasn't prideful and thought, oh, his only his good works. And he was Jesus. So it's so like, we need to be like that too. Or continue to be like that. And then also, hold on, what's my son doing? Okay. And then also, um, he said to him, also, why do you call me good? Or like, why did what he said, Lord, why do you call me good? Or Lord, don't do what I say. It's not before me right now, guys. But anyway, um, when, like, anyway, like when I was, when I wasn't saved and I was in the world, I felt like even though I was going through what I was going through and stuff, I felt like my good works would save me. I felt like I have a, you know, I have a good heart. I'm a good person. God see when I give. God see my kindness. That I felt like that would save me. And it was a person evangelizing. I shared that testimony with you guys. Um, with one of my exes I was with. Um, I went through so much with him. I shared a lot of the, those type of testimonies with you guys. Like very transparent and stuff. And um, this witness this witness had came and he, he came we went to walmart i was going to get um us groceries and get some stuff you know i think we went to the gas station or something and this man was like if you died today do you believe that you will go to heaven and i said yeah and he said why we was in the shoe aisle 
before we went to the other get all the groceries. And I said, because I'm a good person. And he took me to Romans. He was passing out tracks. Hold on, guys. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. He was passing out tracks, um, talking about salvation and all that. And guys, my ex, I was I was open to it. I was open to what he was saying. And I was like trying to get saved, like before he could even leave me there. It's like my ex was like, get away from her. The devil was using him. Get away from her. We don't want to hear this. We don't need this. Just bla pretty much just blaspheming. And the guy was peaceful, you know, but it's like his spirit was drawing me in because by this time, you know, I was listening more to Bible stuff. I was remembering things that my grandma taught me when I was younger, um, before I like sprayed and all these different things and things I learned. And, um, I was just like the Bible videos, people was like devotionals, how I've been sending like the last 10 years or so people was, was send me stuff like that. <clears throat> And like the way that they just kept sending it to me, it would be what I needed. They weren't judging me. You know, they was calling out my sin, but they were doing it in love, you know, and all that was drawing me. The um, I would listen a lot to Billy Graham, certain Christian networks. Uh, people would bless me with like devotionals. People would be like, I'm praying for you. Like, look, all that was adding up. So I tell you guys, no lie. The guy ended up going out and I was like, he must be an angel. But I've had angelic encounters. And like after I got saved, like a, like a little while after that, the Lord had told me he wasn't an angel. He just was really a minister. You know, angels are ministers too, but he was just a physical minister, human form. He, he was a human, basically, not human form, human, because angels can take on human form. But he was a, what you call it, because I had also met an angel that was telling me, I told you guys I was at work and I was stressed and everything um, with the job and just everything I was just going through. And I thought I saw a homeless guy, but it was really an angel and he was looking for food and I was on my lunch break and I was positioned at that time at that place on my lunch break to see him because I usually didn't take my lunch around that time and he was looking in the garbage for food and like I my heart goes out to like homeless people and people that needs food and stuff so I was like I'm gonna give him these breasts because I can always eat later I can just I, I know I when I get off I have some food so I followed him from one end of the store it was a it was a walk from one end of the store to the next and um hold on guys I apologize about the pauses guys but I had followed him from one end of the store to the next. And um, he wasn't a homeless man. He was an angel. When I saw his eyes, it's like, I don't know how to explain this. It's like, I, it's like heaven was on earth. I have never seen nobody eyes like this. And he was dressed. He was dirty. He was like, but he had some beautiful blue icy eyes. I remember his hair color, everything. He was just, it felt like I was not here on this earth when he was talking to me. And it's like automatically I knew I was having a spiritual experience. And he was like, you need to get saved. He was like, you are on your way to hell. He was like, the Lord loves you so much. He has a great calling for your life. He was just telling me like, I need to be healed of childhood trauma and wrong relationships and stuff in my heart. And he was like, just telling me like, it's, I shared this with you guys as well. He was telling me it's not about my works and all this, because if I die, I will go to, you know, to hell. And he was like, you're going to be the one that is going to be a blessing for your family. When your family see that you get saved and you serious about God, you're going to lead many of them to Christ. And he was just telling me so many things. That man was talking to me for about a good 15, 20 minutes. I was so blown. And to me, it didn't even matter that I was on lunch break. Because although I wasn't a TL because I was such a good worker and one of the valuable workers, if I would have came back a few minutes late, they wouldn't have been upset or nothing like that. But I still was being mindful. But it's like in that moment, time did not matter to me, you know. So it was just a powerful experience. And I had some other, I told y'all some other um, angelic encounters. I haven't told you guys all of them because there are some things just between me and the Lord. Just like how you, some of you may have encounters and things that God tell you that could be to share. And then some of it just for you and him, you know. But I've had others um, literally three days before my grandma and my aunt were murdered. The angel came and as, as a guys as a homeless person. It was telling me, um, I told y'all that one too. It was telling me, um I'm going to have to choose, am I going to stay in God or am I going to turn back? Because they were murdered March 2012 and I had got saved like summer 2009, but I didn't take it seriously. 
because I went right back into backsliding and you wouldn't even think I was really into God at all. I think I was just saying it more out of fear, but I didn't think I really meant that. But then 2010, when I told y'all my testimony that woke me up, I got more serious about it. So when he said that to me, I was like, what are you talking about? You know, this, this, that. And literally everything that the angel said, it happened. And I had to make a decision and all that and just other stories. So going back to this Walmart thing, um, going back to this Walmart thing, when we left, when we left, I noticed that, and I was telling him like, um, Google's going back. These are different situations. I was telling him, um, my ex, I, I was telling him like, that was wrong of you to talk to that guy like that. He was just being nice, trying to help us. And then he started laughing and tried to give me a kiss and brush it off. Like he was nothing. He was like, Oh, he's crazy. We don't need to talk to him. We didn't come here for that. I was like, no, that's wrong. I was like, he was trying to talk to us. Cause really he was trying to talk to him first because, um, that particular ex had a lot of voodoo and witchcraft on him. He was doing it. His family was doing it. It's a very long story with that. But um, he was trying to talk to him first before he talked to me. But it's like I was more receptive. But he really, he was talking to both of us. But when he talked, he was looking at him first. Then he talked to me. And I think because my ex saw that I was open and receptive to listen to it. And I wasn't being rude and callous like him. Because keep in mind, God was already drawing me, you know, from all of this. But literally, when we left, guys, we almost got into a really bad car accident. A three-car accident. And I would have died because that car almost flipped. My ex had ended up pulling the wheel. The person behind me um, stopped. They had to ride away. And the person behind them, it was like, I think it would have been like a three or four car. Horrible accident, guys. And when we were leaving, like when we were going out the driveway, not the driveway, but we were pulling out the parking lot of Walmart, I saw that man. And I kept saying, that's my angel. But he wasn't. But at this time, I was saying, I was saying, that's my angel. And he looked at me. And all I could see was his eyes. He had like these brown eyes and I remember he had like blondish brown hair and he was skinny and small, but the power of God on him, you know, now his eyes was just like pulling me in and all I could just remember was the track, you know, and then literally less than two minutes before we turned out from that stop sign, there it was. And I was reminded of what he said and I was so shaken up. I almost couldn't drive. And my ex was like, we got to move from here. We got to move and this and that because people blowing behind us. They're like this and that. You almost got in this in the accident. I was so shaken up. I wasn't, I was shaken up because, oh my God, this could have been an accident with us. I could have lost my life. You could have lost your life. This man just told us this in Walmart. What if you were to pass, you know, and he ministered and I didn't finish listening to him, you know, and he took me back to Romans. You know, and then these these um innocent people behind us, and I was just so shaken up because it's like I could have literally almost died, and this man just was ministering to me. That was so it wasn't crazy, but I was so blown about that. And like at this time, I was like telling my ex, like, "Man, you need to chill." Like I was trying to break away from him, but it's like the stronghold and you know all that stuff. So I was like, "Man, you need to chill." Like. This is serious. I was like, I'm finna just take you back to your mom house and I'll go back to my mom house. And he was like, No, it just was an accident. It could have happened to all of us. So he tried to mask it with, okay, let's um be let's have sex, let's chill, you know, you know, like stuff like that. Like I'll drink and he smoked, but I didn't even I don't want any of that. I didn't want none of that. It's like I just wanted God. You know, so I don't know who I shared that for, but this is true. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. I apologize, guys. I thought we were going to be able to read all of this, but I just felt led to share the, those stories for somebody. Um, There's a lot more where that came from, but I just felt led to just share that. Okay, but let's read as much as possible, and then the rest will just pick up on Wednesday, God's will. Glory to God. So concluding remarks. So I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have because Romans 10, 9, you know, we got to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord and Savior. Not our good works. Not what we do. Not what we don't do. Because the Bible talks about our own filthy, our own righteousness as a filthy rat before him. 
So it's about Jesus. We came in Jesus' name. We got to stay in Jesus' name and be in Jesus' name. It doesn't say that, but I'm just saying that for someone. Okay, so I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have, <clears throat> excuse me, what we have asked of him. If anyone sees his brother commit a sin that does not lead to death, he should pray and God will give him life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin Excuse me, guys, this air conditioner. And I just took my shower not too long ago, so I think that's what it is. Also, but this air, I don't know. So there is a sin that leads to death. I am not saying that he should pray about that. All wrong doing is sin. And there is sin that lead, that does not lead to death. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps him safe. And the evil one cannot harm him. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. So tomorrow we're going to conclude and combine together Second John. We're going to do introduction and outline the contents. And then we're going to do third John introduction, outline the contents and read it. And that's pretty much going to be um, that for that. But I want to thank you guys for joining and tuning in. I love you guys. Peace and blessings. And I pray that y'all have a beautiful day and God bless.